the New York Rangers are one of the bottom six, bottom five teams in the Eastern Conference, and Chris Kreider is somebody on their roster who is expiring later this year. He's at a $4.625 million cap hit at the moment with a modified no-trade clause right now, and by the time the summer comes, he will need a new contract. Enter the New York Rangers and their overall not-so-great position in the standings, and you have a player who has started to enter the trade market as a target. This is from Elliot Friedman's 31 Thoughts Yesterday, from December 31st. It is January 1st, 2020, a new decade. Happy New Year, by the way. But this Elliot Friedman 31 Thought from yesterday kind of tells the whole tale. It's thought number 14, and it says this. Lots and lots of interest in Chris Kreider. No decision yet from the Rangers. There's lots of time, one source said. Again, look at their history. Mark Stahl's last contract was signed on January 18th, 2015. In 2014, they signed Dan Girardi on February 28th. They took Kevin Hayes and Matt Zuccarello down to the wire last year. So, this first little segment is talking about how the Rangers still have time to re-sign Chris Kreider, assuming there is mutual interest and assuming that's actually the direction that they want to go down instead of trading him. However, if they wanted to trade him, there is a lot of interest, believed to include contenders who might be happy to wait for cap reasons, like Boston or St. Louis, and others who aren't worried about that, like the Avalanche. There's plenty of speculation about Montreal, as the Canadians could use some beef, but Kreider's partial no-trade affects that. So, there you have it. Trade rumors revolving around Chris Kreider and the St. Louis Blues, the Boston Bruins, the Colorado Avalanche, and the Montreal Canadiens. Now, when it comes to a trade rental-like scenario for Chris Kreider, some of these teams make more sense than others. But before we get over that, let's talk about the main team here, the New York Rangers first and foremost. We talked about it at the beginning, the Rangers haven't been amazing this year. Capocacco hasn't necessarily been as dominant as some people would have wanted him to be. Of course, you know, he's a first-year rookie, the guy's 18, he's gonna become good, it's just some people thought he would be better earlier. Artemi Panarin is at, like, 10 points in his last three games or something. He's doing incredibly well. But still, the Rangers are one of the bottom five teams in the East. They just got spanked by the Edmonton Oilers, and their overall standing is not amazing when you're taking a look at a team that would probably want to be in a playoff hunt. But that's okay, because they weren't supposed to be this way about a few months ago, maybe like six or seven months ago, people were pegging New York as one of the teams in the East that wouldn't really be in that contention. It's just the additions of Adam Fox, Jacob Truba, Artemi Panarin, Capocacco, and of course, the other guys, Vitaly Kravtsov and Seshyorkin, who aren't even really there. The additions of these guys were supposed to propel the Rangers into a position where they probably could at least contend. But it's kind of showing that they could probably use a little bit more than just that offseason to contend, so the way the Rangers are right now, they are in a position to deal for rentals. Chris Kreider is one of those guys. Right now, he's been having a pretty good statistical year, 25 points in 39 games, on pace for about 50 points. He was at 52 points last year. He was at 53 two years ago. So this is probably the ceiling for a Chris Kreider-like player. 12 goals and 13 assists at the moment, and he's a guy who can help a team out with his intensity. He's always been a hard worker, a guy who can skate really quickly, a guy who can drive to the dirty areas, and a guy who can just help your team out with his passion and drive. His skills aren't great, but his passion makes up for it, and as a result, he is a top six winger in the process. Now, the teams that could be going out for him in a rental-like scenario, the Bruins and the Blues, well, these are two of some of the best teams in the NHL. These teams would love to get a guy like Chris Kreider added into their top six because it would just help them out tremendously. The Blues, 
they're coming off a Stanley Cup. The Bruins, they're already incredible up front with Bergeron, Pasternak, and Marshawn. So these two teams could really benefit from having another rental-like player in their top six. What it would take to pry that away from the Rangers? Well, I don't know, maybe some picks, some prospects. I don't think the Bruins or the Blues would be willing to sacrifice any roster players unless they are a significant downgrade from Chris Kreider because that's the whole point of these trades. You want to make the playoff teams better and the non-playoff teams a little bit better in the long term. So the Rangers, although not necessarily terrible at the moment, they could use to gain for their future by getting some assets for Kreider. Now that's where the other teams come into play here. The Canadians and the Avalanche have a whole bunch of really good prospect pools, but they're not in the same situation. The Avalanche right now are in a pretty good position and they probably might have a better shot at making the playoffs than the Montreal Canadiens. The Avs right now are tied for second in the Western Conference. They're in a position where they do have a great, great set of talent up front with the Kadri's, the McKinnons, the Landeskogs, the Rontanens, and they do have a pretty good prospect pool as well. They did draft in the first round twice last year, and they honestly do have a pretty good shot at making the playoffs. So when it comes to the Colorado Avalanche, they probably would be more willing to part ways with a future asset than the Montreal Canadiens, because Kreider would help out both of these teams, but the difference is the Habs have been much worse than the Avalanche, and that's not sugarcoating anything. The Habs have just not been winning as many games as they probably should be if they want to make the playoffs. Last year, they barely missed out on the playoffs, and that was a best-case scenario kind of year. All their guys had career years, and they still were a little bit short. Nowadays, the Habs haven't been having that career year success from a lot of their guys, and with Druen being injured, the team has kind of suffered in the standings as a result. So, when it comes to the idea of the Habs trading for a rental, sacrificing the future for assets in the now to push for the playoffs, there is a lot of insecurity that comes with that when you mention that to Montreal media and fans, because the Habs aren't as good as the Avs and the Avalanche are in a much better position to make the playoffs than the Canadians are. Compare that with the Bruins and the Blues and you have a completely different ball game. So when it comes to the idea of trading for a Chris Kreider via a rental, I don't necessarily see the Habs doing it, just because the insecurities are there that definitely play into the situation here because there is an insecurity as to whether or not the Canadians have a chance to make the playoffs even with a guy like Kreider in their lineup. Boston, St. Louis, even Colorado. These teams are probably playoff teams already, and Kreider would just help them even further. As for the return in an all-out bidding war, I think the Canadians probably do have the best assets that the Rangers would be interested in, but of course, that's taking out of consideration the really good players on Boston and Colorado and the Binningtons and St. Louis, etc. These are just expendable assets that we're talking about here, and I think the Canadians have much more than the other three teams have to offer. But again, to me, Montreal doesn't seem like the team. They're too insecure at the moment, and if they really wanted to go after a Chris Kreider, I would envision them going after several trade deadline acquisitions, and not just one from New York. Because one from New York isn't going to put this team, who was in a best-case scenario last year, who just missed the playoffs, who are quite far out of the playoffs right now, into the playoffs. So that's my little two cents on it. Obviously, I'll leave a link down in the description to the 31 Thoughts article. This was a video on Chris Kreider and the trade rumors surrounding his name. Happy New Year to everybody watching this video. Happy New Year to you. It's a new decade, which is crazy. Ten years ago, I was in grade four. The fourth grade, getting ready for, I don't know, some math test or whatever. I don't really remember what I was doing 10 years ago. I remember what I was doing 10 years ago. I was watching the Diary of a Wimpy Kid movie. I was collecting action figures like I still am doing now and doing all the other stuff unrelated to hockey because I wasn't a hockey fan back then. I became a hockey fan a year later in 2011 when the Canucks went to the finals, which is even weirder because the Canucks went to the finals almost 10 years ago. Ay yeah. We're getting old. 
and there's nothing we can do to change that. Happy New Year, Happy New Decade to you watching this video right here. Hope you enjoyed this Chris Kreider trade rumor video with the Avs, the Bruins, the Blues, and the Canadiens. Soldiers are trust 99. And bye.